NOAA's search, probing satellite imagery for lost ark. Moviegoers were recently treated to NOAA, an epic story of bravery and sacrifice from the Old Testament, a saga in which the titular character takes on the divine mission to build an ark to save creation from an apocalyptic deluge. Outside the big screen, Speculation has swirled for decades that the leftovers of Noah's Ark hugged the heights of Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey at a spot known as the Ararat Anomaly. In true detective jargon, call it an anomaly of interest. Satellite imagery and analysis may make it possible to resolve the mystery. Portia Taylor, a professor of paralegal studies in the School of Professional and Continuing Studies at the University of Richmond, has led the search into the Mount Ararat Anomaly. Taylor's quest began long ago, he said. The cognitive genesis of my journey began in 1973, some 41 years ago, in my junior year as a cadet at West Point, he told Space.com. Back then, Taylor came across, credible rumors, ricocheting off the walls of the academy that a CIA spy satellite had accidentally imaged, what appeared to be the bow of a ship sticking up out of the ice cap on Mount Ararat, Taylor said. A couple of decades later, Taylor launched his own satellite declassification initiative investigating the Mount Ararat anomaly imagery. Drawing on his 21 years of armchair sleuthing, Taylor has given unclassified presentations at the Pentagon and the U.S. Naval Surface Warfare Center. Along the way, he declared victory in convincing the Defense Intelligence Agency in 1995 to declassify five 1949 U.S. Air Force aerial photos of Mount Ararat. Additionally, thanks to Taylor's invitations, a number of experts over the years have performed analyses of the satellite imagery, which thankfully tempered my zeal as an amateur, Taylor said. So in this day and age, why continue the journey? The wealth of information provided by Digital Globe's satellite imagery keeps Taylor going, he said. My ultimate goal has always been that my acquisition over the years of progressively higher and higher resolution satellite imagery from Digital Globe of the Anomaly might definitively change the anomaly into a known entity, either something geological or perhaps something of biblical proportions, Taylor said. Digital Globe's new and powerful Worldview 3 spacecraft is slated for launch from California's Vandenberg Air Force Base in summer 2014. Among its customer provided attributes, the satellite will yield 31 cm, 12 inches, panchromatic resolution, making it the highest resolution commercial satellite in the world. Digital Globe's constellation of satellites would be the envy of Indiana Jones, Taylor told Space.com. I'm grateful and humbled that Digital Globe has flown numerous gratis missions for me over Mount Ararat over the past decade especially the Quick Bird satellite mission of February 2003 that captured the boat-like form of the anomaly at 15,000 feet, without excessive amounts of snow and ice cover. And Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years and begat a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years, and he died. And Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Chapter 6 And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. 
Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh 